Deanna and this is Jeff and today we're going to be showing you how to um, put bees into a hive or as we say hiving a package of bees. It's very important that people embrace urban beekeeping because our pollinators are um, failing in uh, the normal environment and so beekeepers are helping sustain pollination within gardens and also in the bigger picture into the almond fields which sustains our food source. This is what you call a frame which contains the bee larva and also honey. And there's ten, eight to ten frames in a, a box. And this is what the box looks like. The bees make all this wax. They draw out the comb, make it bigger. See how it's wider? And then they put their, their bee bread, their honey and their uh, babies all in the same little squares. After this has been completed, in regards to the bees have made this kind of a hexagon type comb, they fill it with honey and this is the honey with a capping over it of wax that they generate in their uh, mandibles. What happens is that the uh, queen lays up to a thousand eggs a day and so what ends up happening is that you run out of this area so the bees are constantly making new homes for the babies and also in the meantime the other worker bees are storing and gathering pollen to feed this new thousand babies a day. There's always new bees being manufactured so each intricate insect in this hive or organization I should say has a vital role and once that roll is completed, then they die off and then there's a new generation started. So the interesting thing about the queen bee is that her function is to do nothing but lay eggs. And in doing so, she has to go on a mating flight. And you can buy your packages from a beekeeper where the queen has already been mated. Or if you get a feral hive, they mate in flight. So what they do is, is they fly out and you'll sometimes see these in the skies. They're kind of like a gray where the sperm is staying. So she, that continues to kind of make sure that the species is strong and viable because if you have many different sperms, then you're going to produce many different types of, of bees, which creates a better lineage. And then she comes back to the hive and after a certain amount of time, the drones are of no use anymore and they kick them out and basically kill them. Okay, so these are the caps, which are on the tops of the frames, which closes the honeycombs, which seals the honey. So we have to take those off in order to get the honey released. Then we take this capping knife, which is a heated knife, which will help melt the caps off the comb without burning myself, which I'm a left-handed person, so this should be interesting. We just slice the tops off the caps like this. And this keeps the honeycombs somewhat intact so that when we go to put this back in the hive, once we've taken the honey out, then the bees don't have to work so hard building a new um, vessels to put their honey in. So I take my frame and I place it into the spinner. Oh, it's working good. Look, it's all on the side. You can see how the cells are still intact, but the honey has been removed. This is one of the filtering processes. There's up to six to seven, depending on how dirty the honey is. So you just place it under your spigot with your honey bucket and then you just hopefully turn the screw and open your lever and you should have honey pour out. And now we're ready to bottle. This is called a honey gate. And after we've bottled it, we'll label it 